All right, so uh, we're going to be getting started with setting up some reference cameras. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do um, is actually uh, set my project. So uh, this is excru like extremely important when you're working with XGen um, as to have somewhere to actually save the information. Otherwise, as soon as you start working with XGen, it, it just doesn't know where to store the information. So you need to set up the project and then save your scene as well. Here, I'm just setting up a new project. Mail. And then, uh, yeah, let's go save our, make sure the project is set. I always just double set it because you never know. Got to be, you can never be too careful. Um, the next I'm good thing I'm going to do is import the head geo that um, is provided. So the head.ma. If you have namespaces, go ahead and remove all the namespaces by going up to Windows and then General Editor and Namespace Editor and just remove those uh, namespaces. The next thing I wanted to show you is that on here, you'll have full uh, UVs laid out and they'll all be in the first UDIM. So this is really, really, really important with XGen is to make sure that your UVs are all in the first UV space. Um, this is important because uh, Maya works with PTEX information. If you decide to paint on it with uh, the Maya paint, we won't be doing that, but it, it just needs to have it because that's how XGen reads the information is by storing PTEX maps. Next thing I did here was I just assigned some blends to the head. Uh, I just like to do this so I can see the shapes better. Um, you can assign whatever material you want, but I just prefer to see blends on here. Makes my life easier. After we assigned the blin material, uh, just to see things a little bit better, um, I'm just going up to panels and then perspective, and I'm uh, creating a new camera from here. Um, you can also go up to uh, create and then camera uh, to create a brand new camera that way. So if we go up to create and then we go to camera and then click it, yeah, so you will. <clears throat> You'll have a new camera here, um, and then this is the exact same. Uh, there's no difference. It's just a different, a, a different way, whatever you prefer. Um, so then on this camera, we're going to set the focal length to 55 because that's what we got from the photographer with our reference images is that he took them all at 55 focal length, which is a requ request that I made. Um, you can also get them, uh, if you're downloading images from the internet, you can try to search the metadata um, to find this answer. Uh, then we're going to go down to the environment tab and add an image plane. And then we're going to navigate to our images that we have for reference. So find the right one that lines up with the front, which is the one I'm going to start with, and then pop that in there. So with when you're working in a studio, they will usually have these reference Im images taken for you, and they'll have the focal length and all the information and Usually you won't be the one setting up the cameras, but uh, we're going to do it today. So I'm just lining up as best as I can with this image, and I'm going to scroll down and turn the depth to a thousand so that I can push the image to the back. So you can see we we roughly line up here. Um, we might have to tilt it up and down and kind of tweak the cameras, but um, I'm making sure that I'm moving the camera and not the geometry. So how I'm zooming in is I'm actually holding down the backslash and then the right and I'm right click and I'm dragging my mouse in an empty space. And that's actually zooming in my camera, but it's not actually pushing the physical camera forward. It's just zooming into where I have placed it. So this is actually helpful when you're framing uh, cameras. And you can also pan while you're zoomed by holding down the middle click. And then uh, I think it's alt, and then you're panning around. All right, so after we've lined this up, we're going to call this um, front cam or whatever you want to call it that you can remember which one it is for. And I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to just start plugging in the other images. So um, side cam, back cam, three quarter cam. All the other images, you can line up as many as you like, which is going to help you uh, when you start laying out your guides and styling the hairstyle. So yeah, so I'm going to turn it to the side and then I'm going to, I'm basically navigating from the side camera by middle click and dragging it in the scene or going up to panels and then navigating through my cameras that way. 
So here I'm going to just click the side cam. Um, and everything from this point on is basically um, all procedural. Uh, we're all going to be doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. You'll find with these uh, with with these cameras, they don't line up 100% to this head because, of course, this was like a quick mock-up that I did. So this isn't uh, fully built off a digi double. If you're working in a studio and you got a model from a modeler and you're doing a groom, it'll probably have it one to one and it will line up perfectly. So your job will be much easier. Um, so usually when you're in a studio, they'll, they'll give you the cameras, they'll give you the model and you just have to create the groom on top of it. So your job is much easier than this. Um, I feel like half the battle is, it's with groom is finding good images and then also um, uh, lining up, you know, your cameras and seeing things and having good angles and reviewing your images and stuff. Right, so what you saw me do just there was I just tore off the perspective camera of the of the um, of the side cam, and I'm actually just positioning the camera manually in the 3D view so I can actually see what I'm doing, and then I'm I'm seeing the camera so I'm not actually 100% navigating through it um, as I place these cameras. So you don't have to be in the camera and driving the camera to place it. You can view it through a different perspective camera to uh, place it. You see the eyeball doesn't quite line up but we're going to try to get it as close as possible because we want those eyelashes to be able to line up. In a perfect world, this would all be seamless and work perfectly, but um, for, for the sake of a quick model to use, yeah, I didn't uh, get it as accurate as, as I would have liked. But so here I'm just, yeah, twisting it and uh, trying to line it up. So I'm going to duplicate the cam again, um, and then this one's going to be quarter cam. So the reason why I'm duplicating the cameras and not making a new one every time is because then the focal length and all that information stays the same. The only thing from duplicating cameras that you have to make sure you're doing is when you're clicking on the camera, you need to make sure you go into the environment tab and create a brand new um, uh, image plane. Because if you don't, then you're just going to keep overriding the same image over and over again, and you're going to be curious as to why um, your images are not staying in the right uh, image plane shape. But yeah, if your if your cameras don't line up 100% like mine, don't it it's it's not you, it's the model. Uh, it's not as as good as I would have liked, of course. But we we got there. It looks pretty pretty similar. So that's all I'm trying to go for right now. Also, um, make sure that on your quarter, like on your new image planes, you're also setting the depth as well to push the image plane backwards because that won't copy over from whenever you're duplicating the cameras. So I'm setting up the back cam now. So we're going to just plug in the back image. So I basically set up the front side quarter back, um, and then a back three quarter. Um, we have a top image as well. Unfortunately, I don't have images for the other, um, the other side of the head, which is really, really unfortunate because it would have been great to have, but unfortunately I didn't get my hands on that. Um, I wasn't actually at the photography shoot, so unfortunately I couldn't direct how things were being taken, but, um, I would recommend that you do get another image for the other side of the head. So for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to make the other side of the head pretty similar to um, the one side. So it's going to be kind of symmetrical. 
Uh, this is one way to cheat it if you can't see the other side of the head, but also uh, you can kind of get a sense of what the other side of the head will look like from the back images. So that's why I'm lining these all up is so that we can kind of get a full perspective look on how the hairs are going, like what's the direction, how's the flow going, because um, we can't get that from just a couple images. And we do need to line it up so that when we put our guides in place and make our curves, um, everything lines up. Recording. All right, you see me moving the uh, head model. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> your head model should already be lined up. I think I was experimenting to see if it would fit better, um, and it and it did fit better. So I think uh, yours should already be lined up like this. So don't move it. Just make sure you're not moving the three D geometry at all. Uh, it should just line up to the best of uh, the abilities that it can. You should only be moving the, the camera. Side camera relined up with the new position of the head that I uh, that I made. I rotated the camera instead, but that's it's okay. We got it. We got there in the end. Much better when it's uh, rotated a bit. We got pretty close to the eye line too, which is nice. A couple things are off, but it it is what it is. We did our best. <laughs> Getting these cameras is like the hardest part, I would say. Um, once the cameras are in place, then everything else kind of kind of just works out because um, you have all the information at your at your fingertips. It's all right there. So um, you can kind of see where the flow of the hair is going and all that. So um, this is usually how I like to start all of my projects is by setting up my cameras. Um, once they're set up, then I lock them all so they cannot be moved and they just are there um, for me to look at and reference as I'm placing my guides for uh, the hairstyle. Um, So I'm just middle click and dragging these out to double check that they're all lining up perfectly with what I want them to line up with. Um, and they seem all good to me. A uh, couple tweaks here and there for some of the things. I'm just like rotating upwards. Don't don't be shy to kind of rotate things and see how they line up and but yeah, again, don't rotate the geometry. <laughs> just the cameras. Try to go underneath the chin and up and it can be a bit of a pain. that these are all working. All right, so now that I have all of these uh, 
cameras. Um, I'm going to make sure that I lock them all. They're all visible in the viewport, which is actually something we don't want. So I'm going to make sure that I go into the attributes of the image plane and I'm turning all of this to look through camera only. So this turns it all off while I'm grooming. So it's not a big disastrous mess and all we can see is the cameras. Then I'm going to go through one by one and lock the cameras as I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going through, grabbing all the attributes and setting lock. So I'm right clicking and then locking the selected. And then I'll do this for all of the cameras. So now we should have all of our cameras locked. We'll group them, call it ref cam, and there we have it. We are all finished for setting up our cameras.